In summary, thanks for the subs, it means a lot to me, and I'm making more videos. Should have written that down. Yo, it's Kim, and I wanted to compare the G85 versus the G7, because believe it or not, in 2018, they are both still very viable cameras if you're just starting out in video or photography. Now, obviously these two cameras are great, but in terms of price, the G7 is literally half the price of the G85 at times. And that begs the question, how do they stack up? Starting us off with external factors, the exterior actually almost looks exactly the same. They have the same controls in the exact same places, save for some buttons like the flash button, and they also use the same battery. But it's really in the build quality that you start to notice some of the differences. The G85 is solid. It has a magnesium front plate, but it feels like the whole camera is made out of metal. If you've ever held an Olympus OMD camera, that's about how solid the G85 feels. On the other hand, the G7 is more plasticky, but it's lighter. Having a quick look at the specs shows that it's only 90 grams lighter, but this is an underrated advantage of the G7. Now when you're out on professional shoots, it largely doesn't matter because you're not holding the camera the entire time. But when I'm out and about, I usually take the G7 because it's light enough that I don't feel it with me most of the time. But the G85 is just that much heavier that it can be annoying at times. Also the grip on the G85 is slightly smaller, especially near the bottom. And this is probably another factor as to why the G7 feels better in my hand. Moving on to image quality, overall the video quality out of these cameras are basically identical. The sensor on the G85 doesn't have an anti-aliasing filter, but I don't see a difference in video and maybe a marginal upgrade in sharpness in photos. But for all intents and purposes, the video out of these cameras, when you set the exact same settings with the exact same lens, is going to be exactly the same. So lastly, usability, starting with the mic jack. Placement isn't ideal on the G85 because it blocks the touchscreen, but that's a minor thing for me. Moving on to the SD card slot, for as much praise as this has received for being on the side of the G85, I actually find it easier to grip the camera when the door is on the bottom. Because my tripod plates are small enough I don't need to remove them to replace the G7 batteries or the SD card. And because of the IBIS, I'm using tripods a lot less anyway, but that could just be a personal thing. Moving on to weight, you already know that the G7 is lighter, and if you're on shoots and you're constantly on tripods and constantly running and gunning, you won't notice it too much. But if you're just out on a day, and especially if you don't use a camera strap or a wrist strap or anything like that, the G85 actually does get a bit annoying sometimes. Now in terms of build quality, did it actually add to my experience? Yes, because the G85 feels solid, I guess it just feels more expensive or premium. And no, because the grip is slightly smaller and I don't really care about the weather ceiling, I don't shoot in the rain. One of the biggest differences for me was that the G85 has the ability to change between NTSC and PAL frame rates. The G85 came with PAL and there's a hack to use NTSC on it, but you don't want to be doing that sort of thing during shoots. The G85 allows me to select between 25, 30, 50, and 60 FPS. And that's a big deal. Last but not least, IBIS. IBIS is magical. It has changed my workflow so much. Previously, if I was going handheld, I'd use a strap to stabilize the camera or use a gimbal. These days, I hardly use the camera strap and I only use a gimbal if I'm making really big camera movements. So I'm late to the party, but going handheld with IBIS is a real thing. You won't need straps for most of the time. You'll only need gimbal sometimes. It's a game changer. So wrapping this up, I'm keeping the G7 because it still has its uses. It can basically match the G85 for videos and stills. It's really easy to sync up the settings, the controls, the colors, and it even uses the same battery. But ultimately, who are these cameras for? I like to think that they're actually not in competition with each other. The G7 is a consumer-oriented budget option, which is still great in 2018 if you're a budding filmmaker or YouTuber. It's also a great B-cam if most of your shots are on tripods or gimbals, or if you're just a pro at going handheld, then by all means, get the G7. You get a stellar camera that punches well above its weight, and you buy into a system with a wide selection of lenses. And I'm gonna say it again, even though the G7 is made out of plastic, it feels great in the hand, and personally, I find it's more comfortable than the G85. On the other hand, the G85 is more for prosumers or people looking for the next step up, but that won't show up in sexy things like image quality. Now at the end of the day, if there's just two things that separate the G85 from the G7 for me, 
it would probably be being able to switch between PAL and NTSC and IBIS. Mostly IBIS. And whether it's worth double or more the asking price is really up to you. Before we start, I want to level with you guys. I never expected this channel to have more than 50 subscribers. It started as a small project to practice making videos, and I didn't even tell anyone I started it, and now there's actual people subbing to it. So I just want to say thank you guys, and I hope you enjoy all the stuff I have planned for this community, and I'm just overwhelmed by your support. In summary, thanks for the subs, it means a lot to me, and I'm making more videos. Should have written that down.